This is Telecom TV from 5G World, part of the Tech Accelerate event marking London Tech Week 2017. In today's headlines, BT takes to the skies with its pre-5G helikite, how MIMO can be used for sub-6 gigahertz solutions, Etsy MEC takes APIs beyond the edge, and the crazy world of Hyperloop transportation. To mark the opening of London Tech Week, BT hosted an innovation day at its R&D headquarters at Adastral Park. Amongst the many demos on display was the Helikite solution from its EE mobile division. The blimp-mounted small cell uses pre-5G backhaul technology to connect to the core network. What we're looking at doing is, is having um, uh, some of these balloons in different zones in the country. And uh, if there is a disaster in uh, in certain part of the country, then uh, we would have these point of presence in the country from which we could we could send one of these balloons, and they could support uh, or create a completely new network, a temporary network for people who've been affected by disasters in in that zone itself. What we have right now is uh, is a 4G system access system, and uh, we are working on the pre 5G backhaul, which you see today. This is a pre-release 15 uh, backhaul which we have. So going forward, we would see the implementation of things like massive MIMO and uh, and and, and uh, you know network slicing to come with it. So so that the, on the 5G layer, you would have a completely separate uh, slice for uh, for for. Uh, activities like this. It evolves into, from a 4G system, it evolves into the 5G system itself. Meanwhile, here at Excel in East London, the Tech Accelerate event is bringing together vendors, operators and academics to discuss various components of the 5G ecosystem. Amongst one of the most talked about areas is MIMO technology. Lund University in Sweden is one of the pioneering centres for MIMO research and it's taken the technology beyond millimeter wave applications and into sub six gigahertz spectrum. At sub six, we require TDD operation. It means that we need to use the same frequency both when communicating to the base station as well as from the base station. And that we need to do in order to improve efficiency so that we can reuse the channel estimates that we extract from the uplink when the user is communicating to the base station. Then we are extracting the channel state information and then we are doing some pre-calculations and then we use that to make sure that we have no signal, interfering signal where the other user are and that we have a strong signal where the intended user is located. Operators are hoping to use 5G to deliver more tailored services to industry segments. Facilitating this is application enablement which provides a generic framework for delivering new services. The MEC wall can be described uh, according to four components. So the first component that we specified is uh, application enablement, which is a generic framework for the delivery of services which can be consumed or offered by either locally hosted or remote external applications, of course, which are authorized to consume or offer that. And this is a generic framework that can be used all over the industry. It enables service discovery, service registry. It enables authentication authorization of the applications which provide and offer the services and a communication support for query and response and as well as notification. Utilizing a common framework across the industry ensure common practices for the developers when they interface their applications with the network and allow also a operators to monetize the network in a consistent way. Of course, the future isn't just about wireless connectivity. We still need innovative physical solutions. And it doesn't get much more futuristic than Hyperloop transportation, an idea kick-started by Elon Musk and which is now the subject of real-world testing. So we're very excited because we passed from feasibility studies to actual implementation. We started to build the first full-scale capsule passenger system with a Tier 2 manufacturer called Carbures. Uh, it's a Tier 2 manufacturer of uh, Airbus. And because it takes a little while, a year and a half, to create a capsule, that was the first element that needed to be sorted out. And we started to build the first one last month. Uh, we are foreseeing the first capsule to be ready in 2018. In the meantime, we signed seven contracts with the nations that are actually willing to implement an hyperloop. And we did several feasibility studies 
The biggest one was in Abu Dhabi. It was the most complete uh, Hyperloop study that humanity has ever done. We analyzed all the aspects of building the infrastructure, but also what is the impact in terms of social impact, um, uh, uh, sustainability, not only on the Abu Dhabi of the present, but also on the Abu Dhabi of the future, taking in consideration the complete master plan that the government has. So we finished the feasibility study, we're going to publish the result after Ramadan, and then the government, we're discussing with the government to build the first full-scale item. That's all from 5G World for today. Until tomorrow, thanks for watching and goodbye.